Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and if you're new here, hello. Welcome to my little corner of the interwebs where I come at you uh, pretty much every week or every other week and share what I've been making. Uh, we do a lot of knitting, crochet, uh, lots of quilting. I dive down many a different rabbit hole here on this channel. So if that is something that you're into, you're in a good place. So gather around, grab a cup of something and let's get into things because my friends, I have quite a lot to share with you. Uh, a lot of FOs, believe it or not. And I don't know if, if it's because I've been doing a lot of traveling, getting out of Dodge and just new experiences and everything, but I have been getting all the things done. I've been making all the things, finishing all the things. And I have to tell you, it feels so good because I feel like, yeah, for like the past year or so, I've just been in kind of like this lull, like I've been crafting, but haven't really been finishing anything or yeah, it's or sticking with anything. And lately it's just, I'm, who am I? I'm a totally different person. So yeah, really, really happy about that. I'm, I'm riding that wave and yeah, I'm not questioning it. Uh, so yeah, uh, without further ado, um, again, this week, Marga the Mannequin, my lovely assistant is not wearing anything because yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. Starting off with, <laughs> I'm wearing it. Uh, this is my Kismet pullover. It is a finished finished object. It is a beautiful pattern by Rachel Ilsley and oh my goodness guys, I love it so much and I am suffering right now because it is 79 degrees Fahrenheit here in Port Chester, New York where I hail from and yeah, it's a hot one. So, you know, the things, the things we do for the YouTubes. Um, yeah. So what do I want to say about this? You're probably tired of hearing me talk about the yarn. The yarn is my hand dyed yarn, Woolen Vine Yarns, all dyed on my Nouveau base, which is a fingering weight, single ply, super wash, uh, yeah, Superwash Merino in four different colorways. Uh, for the main color down here, we have Grimm. Uh, for the light color up here, it's like a light purplish gray is Poe, named after Edgar Allan Poe. And then this kind of rusty golden brown right here is Laudanum. And this gray mixed in between, it's a very like low volume contrast almost, uh, but it's uh, just a dark, cool gray. It's called Weep. And yeah, I just love the way that all these colors Play together. It just, yeah, I love it. I love it. What a joy to knit. I mean, I could not put this thing down. I just, it, it didn't fall to the wayside. I just kept at it. And before I knew it, I had a sweater. Um, I did make a couple of adjustments uh, to the pattern or omitted certain things just because, yeah, I was happily knitting away around and around on Body Island. I did not include any color uh, color work on the sleeves or at the bottom of the sweater. So I'll stand up so you can see. Um, in the pattern, she gives you, I think, three different options for color combinations and finishing it off. I just knit around and did a ribbing and bound off. And I, I'm not mad about it. Um, the sleeves, I did my usual, just knit in the round and then do a rapid decrease at the cuff um, and then knit the ribbing. So that gives it kind of like this little balloon mushroom effect at the bottom, which I love on all my sweaters. Um, and I did see that Rachel Ilsley, she posted on social media a while back how she too loves to wear her sleeves like over, just wear super long sleeves so they cover over her knuckles. And I am in that same camp. I could totally relate to that post because yeah, all of my sweaters, they must, they must at least be able to cover the knuckles for me to enjoy wearing them. So yeah, and I'm trying to think what else. Um, did not alternate skeins. So I'll stand up again so you can see. Um, yeah, it just has a very nice, even variegation happening. On the sleeves, it's a little more noticeable. You see a little stripiness happening, but again, it's a dark color. Um, it, it's not pooling. That's what I'm happy about. It's just striping, not doing all this wavy gravy stuff. So, you know, that's a win for me. And other than that, I did do my very first tubular bind off. I've never done that before. And I have to say the pattern, again, so incredibly, so incredibly well written. She even links to a video tutorial where she shows you in depth how to do a tubular bind off. So I found that incredibly helpful. If you're new to color work, uh, this is a great, great pattern because yeah, very simple, quick, 
color changes, you're only ever using two colors per round. Um, if you're new to sweater knitting, again, I, you know, adventurous beginner because there is some interesting construction happening here in the, the yoke or the raglan shaping, I should say. So, um, and also, I don't know if you can tell, there is color work happening in the raglan increases. So just be aware of that. I mean, it's not, it's not super tricky if you know how to do raglan increases. Um, and you have the gist of color work down, it's it's a no-brainer, but just be aware, this might be a little challenging. Um, so anyway, yeah, just thought I would mention that. Uh, what else do I wanna say about it other than I am absolutely smitten with it, I love it, and cannot, cannot wait to wear it once the weather gets cooler. That is my Kismet sweater. Again, a wonderful pattern by Rachel Ilsley. I will link to where you can find the pattern down below on Ravelry and on her website and everything else that I mentioned in this episode will be linked down in the description box below. Um, and yes, what else? I have some coffee. Oh. So life-giving, so life-giving. I woke up early today because we are actually having um, a patio put in. We're finally putting the patio in because right now it's just like a grass pit out there in the backyard and um, yeah, we're finally pulling the trigger on getting a nice little, nothing major or anything, but just some place to put our our table so we can have barbecues and stuff. Anyway, if, if you hear some noise, that's what's happening. So I apologize in advance for any drilling or hammering construction. Good times. The next FO that I have to share with you is something that <laughs> makes me so happy and that is my finished doily pillow. Ah, it's done, it's done and it makes me so, so happy guys. Um, this is, well if you remember in my last episode, this is the finished doily that I showed. Uh, this is the Summer Splendor by Denise Augustine, I believe is the designer. Anyway, again, links all down below. Um, but I finished the doily and I shared plans for turning it into a pillow and here is said pillow. And yeah, uh, if you've been tuning in for quite some time, you're like, Kristen, that's really bright, really bright and fun and loud and crazy. Wait, what's happening here? And you are not incorrect. Yes, this, the color scheme happening here is beyond my comfort zone. But at the same time, I have to say, I can't help it. It makes me so happy. Um, so yeah, this, the yarn that I use, or the crochet thread, is Aunt Lydia's size 10 crochet thread in the wasabi colorway. It's obviously this very bright, um, kind of lime green and what I did was I laid it over as uh, some like natural linen to kind of kind of tone it down there you can kind of see it uh, and then on the flip side a member of this YouTube channel actually suggested that I you know instead of just doing the plain linen on the back I do Liberty fabric on the back so that is what this is um, and I picked this up from duckadilly.com they are um, a fabric, they're a fabric shop, but they specialize only in Liberty fabrics and they're based in the US. So um, I like, yeah, I, I'm not allowed to go back on that site for quite some time because it is very dangerous. Um, but yeah, I picked out this really pretty floral pattern, which has, you know, pinks and uh, pops of similar uh, lime greens. And then, and then to top things off, I got this fun lime green bobble trim. And I'm actually going to be publishing a vlog showing how I made this. Um, it was a lot of trial and error. I kind of, you know, I wasn't following a pattern. I basically drafted my own circle pattern, a uh, circle template, if you will, to cut out the fabric, which <laughs> was a little bit of a challenge, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I, I somehow got a relatively perfect circle, cut out my fabric, um, and then did a lot of basting stitches around here. And again, there's going to be a vlog. You'll see my whole process and yeah, I just have to finish editing it. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think what else. I have a lot, I'm shutting guys. Lots, lots of Kristen hair all over. <laughs> Usually it's my cat, but this week it's, it's Kristen hair. Go figure. I did stuff this with a whole bag of polyfill. Um, and I have to say stuffing pillows like this shape is not as easy as you would think because there's a lot of finessing, a lot of finagling to not get it clumpy. I don't know if you can tell, but there are still some clumps there. I have to, I have to spend a little time kind of zhuzhing, <laughs> zhuzhing it around to kind of even it out. But there you go. There's my doily pillow and it, you know, not only is it giving me 
macaron vibes, but it's also giving me Kate from the last Homely House lime green sofa vibes. Lots of lime green sofa energy happening in this pillow. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, oh my gosh, uh, check out the last Homely House hosted by Kate. It's here on YouTube. I will link to her channel down below. But she has the metaphorical lime green sofa where everyone, it's this long, imaginary lime green sofa. Everyone's invited to sit down and pass down the pie, pass down the cake, the coffee. Um, yeah, and just looking at this, it, like this pillow should be something that hangs out on the lime, lime green sofa. And that kind of, yeah, it, it's kind of just a little piece of the lime green sofa in my home. And I'm here for it. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's my doily pillow. Um, I do have enough fabric left over to make a second one, but you know what? I love the fabric so much. Um, I might just, I might just make a project bag for myself out of it or, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe a mini quilt or something like a wall hanging. Um, but speaking of quilting that, you know, that's, I think all that I have to say about my crochet doily pillow. Uh, so again, look out for the vlog coming soon. Um, but speaking of quilting, I, finished my quilt top, my friends. It's done! So many, again, like I said, so many finished projects. Who am I? Um, so again, this is a fin only a finished quilt top. I still have to quilt it and bind it, um, but this is the Montana Primrose quilt by a pattern by Laundry Basket Quilts. Fabric is also by Laundry, La La Laundry Basket Quilts. Um, this is massive, guys. Uh, it's gonna be too small to share on like full screen or whatever, but um, I'm gonna pop a photo here. I took an aerial shot of it so you can see what it looks like in all of its glory. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but my, my, my sewing of triangles when it comes to quilting, there's room for improvement. And um, if you've never quilted before, some shapes are a little bit more complex to sew together and get to lie flat. And this is one of those projects where if laying, laying completely flat on the ground, it does not lie completely flat. Um, which, you know, is not, you know, that doesn't mean that the project's ruined. It just means that, you know, when it comes time to quilt it, there may be some puckers and folds here and there. But I am by no means concerned about that because again, if you look at this, this is super busy, uh, lots going on. So if there are any creases, uh, I, I anticipate that they're going to be minor and very well camouflaged. So again, I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. And I am going to be sending this out to Missouri Star to be long armed um, and then they're gonna send it back to me and then I'm gonna finish it off with some binding uh, because yeah, my machine, my machine guys is not big enough. I have a little tiny Janome 2212, um, you know, great machine, uh, but certainly not big enough to quilt something of this magnitude. Um, believe me, I've tried and it's not fun. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, the, the whole idea behind this project was to use it as a wall hanging in my dining room. Now that I'm finished with it, I don't know if I love it enough to hang it in the dining room. It's, you know, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful quilt, but I'm not in love with it. Um, it's not one of my favorite makes, you know? Um, I don't know why. It's, it's just, you know, I, yeah, it was really fun to make, but at the end of the day, I'm just like, I don't know if I want to hang it on my wall. So <laughs> it's back to the drawing board when it comes to finding some, you know, like a wall decor piece for my, for my dining room. Um, yeah, I just think it's too, it's too boudoir -y, if that makes any sense. Like there's just a lot of floral prints happening in there. I mean, the, the fabric is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I am here for the fabric. Uh, just, yeah, lots of floral prints. Um, paisleys, which I am obsessed with, uh, but it's not, yeah. I feel like that's more like bedroom style and not dining room style. I have to find something a little, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for, but when I, when I find it, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, but what else did I want to say? Yeah, this, I mean, again, another project that was really fun to make, uh, it held my interest throughout the entire process. I mean, look at this, this is the center. Look how cool that is. <sighs> yeah, this whole project is comprised of 
triangles. They're all triangles, uh, the same size, just constructed differently. And last week, where is it? Let me go get it. In the last episode, I talked about a triangle that I was having a little trouble with. Uh, and here it is, I have an extra one left over. Again, the quilt is made up of all of these triangles in this size. So yeah, really clever construction. Uh, but I was having trouble constructing this triangle in particular, just because um, the pattern uh, says to cut out three strips, sew them together, and then use a template to cut out the pieces and then sew those pieces together. So what was happening is I was, so, I was doing that, but the template was bigger than all three strips sewn together. So it had me scratching my head and Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I got so many emails and so many messages. It was a little impossible to reply to all of them, but thank you so much um, to everyone who, uh, you know, filled me in on what exactly a scant quarter inch is. Um, I now know <laughs> and scant quarter inch is when it's just a little bit less than an actual quarter inch. Um, so unfortunately that was not the case. What happened was I, I tried cutting my, um, my strips at a scant quarter inch and then even a fat quarter inch, if that makes any sense. And still was not, I, I was racking my brain. I don't know what the heck was, what I was doing wrong. So I went on the web and I found the blog post where she shows you step-by-step -step how to um, make the block. This is block number eight. And you know, I. Again, I was following everything to a T, was not coming out with something that would give me this. So I clicked on the video tutorial, which was kind of hard to find. It was kind of embedded in the blog post. And then I read some of the comments and people were running into the same issue. And what was happening was that there's a mistake in the pattern. So two of the strips should have been two inches. And then the third strip at the bottom should have been two and a half inches. And that, that was what was throwing me off. So uh, again, I have to get around to emailing customer service just to let them know that there is an error in the pattern, but that's what got me the correct size triangle. I will email customer service and kindly let them know that there is a discrepancy there. So anyway, but yes, my, my quilt is done, um, or the top, I should say. So this is, you know, I, this is gonna go out to Missouri Star Quilt and then again, come back to me and I will finish it off. So yay. I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, there is another quilt top that I still have that I want to send out. And that is my William Morris, haha, <laughs> my Mil William Morris um, kaleidoscope. I think it's, what is it? I completely forgot. This is one of my very first quilt tops. I believe it's my second one, second or third one that I ever made. Um, but this is the Kensington kaleidoscope quilt and I'm blanking on the, the designer, but um, I used, this beautiful William Morris fabric from Free Spirit. And again, it's gonna be way, way too uh, big to show on this tiny screen, but uh, I am super proud of it, super proud of the way it turned out. I mean, again, if I had one of those giant design boards or you know, I was a little more well-versed in um, color placement and everything at the time when I was making this, I probably would have chosen different fabrics for different blocks. Anyway, again, it's a learning process. I'm having fun. And at, at the end of the day, I'm super proud of this one. So I think this one is going to go to the long armor next. Um, so yeah, anyway, really, really excited about that one. I don't know why I never got around to sending this out. It's just kind of been hanging out in my linen closet waiting to be shipped out. That my friends is pretty much all I've been working on. Uh, what, what's on my needles now? Yes, hang on a second. I feel like I'm jumping all around this week just because, again, so much to share with you. Um, but this is a new cast on. Once this was bound off, finished, blocked, photographed on, on Ravelry on Instagram, I went ahead and cast on another sweater as you do. Um, and you've probably seen this on my Instagram feed, but I cannot put this down. Another pattern that I am having way too much fun with is the um, Alpine Bloom Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. So yay, here is where we are. Uh, yeah, plowing through this project like no one's business. And again, the yarn, I'll give you a second to guess. <laughs> it's my hand dyed yarns, Vollenwein yarns in on the Volca base, uh, which is a four ply fingering weight Superwash Merino Nylon Cashmere Blend. 
buttered kittens to the max, uh, in, again, the laudanum colorway, uh, which is the same color that I used in this sweater. I, I love this color. It's like easily one of my new favorites. Um, and the contrast yarn is by Spin Cycle, uh, as the pattern suggests. Um, it, it calls for Spin Cycle dyed in the wool, and I am using the Space Oddity color. And here's what it looks like. Yeah. So again, if you if you've been following this channel, you know that I don't really gravitate towards blues. Um, but when I saw these two color um, these two colorways together, I think it was the contrast that really drew me to it. Um, so this actually, this skein actually came into my life by accident because I had ordered another colorway and they sent me the wrong skein. Um, but when I saw it, I actually really kind of liked it. So I emailed them and said, hey, you know, instead of exchanging it, would you mind if I just keep this colorway? Because I really, really like it. And they said, yes, go ahead. Um, so yeah. And right now I'm coming into some pink territory, which I'm really happy about. And it actually, you know, because I'm already about to start knitting the, the flower part of the color work, um, there's gonna be like a nice little flower power bloom right here. I'm really happy that it's gonna be on the pink side. So yeah. Um, and the pattern actually calls for two skeins of Spin Cycle. So I have this second skein of Ghost Ranch that I originally was using for my Moon Bumps shawl, um, a pattern that I did not finish just because I wasn't really enjoying the process. I mean, it's a beautiful pattern. I would love to have the finished object, but the process, I really wasn't enjoying it. So kind of scrap that. Anyway, I have the second skein of Ghost Ranch that I am going to use to finish off the color work for this. Um, and I'm actually thinking about reversing the order of the color. So I might put this on my ball winder and reverse it. So I'm starting off with these colorways as opposed to this because I feel like this is a little too muddy. Like it's like a muddy, like blue, purple, and then it goes into yellow, which yeah, I'm not, I'm not really crazy about. I'd rather, I'd rather it start off with, let me see what's in here. What's in here? Yeah, like a blue, I think it makes sense. Yeah, it's like blue and pink on the inside. So we'll reverse this. I'll throw it on my ball winder and we'll go from there. Um, and I'm trying to think what else I want to say about this. I'm knitting the second size to the smallest. So this should give me about a 40, 41 inch bust. Again, not swatching as I do. And I'm using the needles that the pattern calls for a US 4, 3.5 millimeter. And that my friends is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. Uh, it's, it that felt like a lot. Um, but yeah, I, again, like I'm just so happy to be writing this creative flow that I'm, creative kick that I'm on. I don't know, I don't know what, again, like what's in the water? Who am I? I think that is it. So I am gonna be wrapping things up. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. Again, if you're new here and haven't already, please do feel free to like and subscribe down below. I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure on a regular basis. Um, again, this summer has just been a little crazy, uh, you know, with, you know, doing all the things and yeah, you, you know how it goes, trying to cram everything in. Um, so lately it's been every other week that I've been publishing a video. So that's okay uh, because once the weather gets cooler, I'm hopefully going to get back into recording every week. Um, but if you are a member of this channel, uh, you get to enjoy my mini waffles, which are bonus vlogs that I publish throughout the week. Usually it's like about, you know, two to three that I publish. They're just, you know, very casual, laid back vlogs where I check in with you, let you know what I'm up to, behind the scenes, what I'm working on, life-wise, craft-wise. It's a lot of fun and yeah. Um, and, and you get an invite to our private Facebook group, which I, I admittedly have been neglecting, again, because of the summer, um, but I'm back, <laughs> I'm back in there. I am, you know, checking in regular, regularly. And yeah, it's just a blast of, you know, viewers like you hanging out, sharing projects, patterns, uh, inspiration. Um, I'm thinking about starting up another make-along. Make-alongs are really difficult to host just because of, you know, trolls and spam that, that descends upon the comment section. So my workaround, unfortunately, for that is to host them in the, in the Facebook group. Uh, it just makes my life easier and keeps you guys safe um, and my channel safe. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, please do consider becoming a member because it's a lot of fun and I am super incredibly grateful to everyone who supports this channel and the work that I do. It's, yeah, you're, you're just awesome. Uh, so anyway, 
All right, my friends, have an amazing weekend and I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.